guys, Steve Davis here, Stillwater Woodcraft. What I'm going to talk today about is uh, carrying on a little bit with our flintlocks discussion. Now I don't talk about a rifle very much because a smoothbore is my preferred gun for just, you know, general woods roaming. But, you know, I do have a very nice Virginia pattern rifle. Um, and I shoot out of this a patched round ball as opposed to the chewed and wadded round ball out of my smooth board. And I thought I'd uh, make me some patches up here this morning, uh, replenish my supply and my shooting bag a little bit. I thought it might be a good thing to share with you guys. So in my rifle, okay, I shoot a 490 round ball with a very thin patch that'll just start with my thumb. So I don't have to use something like a short starter or use the butt end of my knife to drive that ball in. I can get this rifle loaded a little bit faster. Now it still seals in the barrel, uh, you know, gases don't escape, and it's still pretty accurate. You know, it's I can shoot with this combination and my eyesight and shooting ability about a three inch group at 50 yards, which isn't too bad. So. Let's talk about this a little bit. Let me first get a charge in the rifle here. Looks like I need to fill my powder horn up when I get home. So, one of my pre-measured charge. Of course, you're going to want to use the charge, you know, that's most accurate in your gun. And in the little pocket here on the back side of my shooting bag, I keep my little round ball bag and plugging that is a roll of patching. Okay, this bag you can just shake a round ball out of really easy. Now this patching is a thin um, linen material. You're only want to use something natural, so you know a synthetic or something like that will that will melt in the barrel and leave a bunch of fouling. It just won't be. Uh, very good. <laughs> this is also lubricated, so it lubricates every shot, it makes loading it a little better, and it helps the rifle from building up a bunch of fouling. Now, there's a certain way I make these. Let me move up here a little bit. I cut these in a roll so they are attached, okay, just at the sides. Now, I don't want to use a patch knife or anything like that to cut this off of a roll or a big piece because that's just going to slow me down. So the way these work is you got your charge in there. You can pull this roll which is plugging the the bag for your round balls. You just lay that up there. Set your ball on top. Sprue up. And just start it with your thumb. Okay. Pull that off. It's easy as that. No cutting, no short starter, none of that stuff to slow it down. And also, this thin one, I can just take and run it down and seat it on my charge that easy. Okay, there's no jamming it down, fighting it down there. I've seen guys, you know, have one heck of a time getting a round ball down the barrel. But, you know, this combination works accurately in my gun. You're going to want to figure out what's the most accurate in yours. Don't sacrifice, you know, accuracy for speed and loading is, uh, I guess, what I'm getting at. It's, uh, I'd rather have an accurate gun than one that loads, you know, 10 seconds faster. So. There she is, ready to go. Just that easy. So, let's make up some uh, a roll of uh, patching material here. We'll move over to the stump where we can get down and uh, do some work. And uh, let's get to it. Okay, we'll move down here. We're going to make us up a roll of patching material for the rifle. So I have the material here to use for my patches. When selecting a material for your patches, you want a natural material like cotton or linen. This is a pretty thin, lightweight linen. OK, 
Okay, I've cut it to the width that if I lay that ball in there and I fold that around that ball, it covers the ball. Now, when you pick your thickness of your material, you might have to play around with some different material and different ball sizes to get the most accurate load for your particular gun. So that's something to keep in mind. But like I said, if you can at all possibility, keep it thin enough that you can start it with your thumb. So I have this strip cut, and I have some fixing wax here because we're going to want to make these patches lubricated if, if that's the way you want to go. You can use a, a spit patch or a, you know lubricate it as you go, but I find it's easier to lubricate it all at once. And the way I do that is I just pull this material over that fixing wax until I got a real good coat on it. If you guys can hear that noise in the background, it is absolutely raining hickory nuts on me here. So, get a good coat worked in this cloth. You can also melt this fixing wax down and then uh, run your patching material through it as a liquid. And that works all right, but I find it puts maybe an excessive amount on your patching material. There's other things you can use for lubricant. Uh, the tallow works really good, especially in cold weather. It stays a little softer than fixing wax does. So I got a good coat on this strip. I'll straighten it back out here. Fixing wax makes it stick together a little bit. Okay? So I got a good coat on there. What I want to do is fold it in half lengthwise, making them edges meet up. like that. So we got it folded in half lengthwise. There. So I want to take my scissors or your knife or however you want to do this and just cut that until it's almost through. And what that's going to do is leave your two little tabs on the edge. You can just kind of guess that distance make them somewhat square As you can see you can do this ahead of time at camp or at home or what have you and it'll save a lot of time cutting patches in the field and all you gotta do is just tear them off so there guys how I make my patches for my rifle hope this has been helpful to you this has been Steve Davis of Stillwater Woodcraft thank you for your views thank you for your support we'll see you on the next one